In this video, we're going to be creating invisible walls using two distinct methods that we're going to discuss in detail as we go through this video. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you're caught up for all future tutorials that I make, and let's dive into this. Before we begin, I should note that I created two different wall objects that I'm going to use throughout this tutorial. Starting with the first method, let's go into a blueprint for any object that we want to be invisible. On the left-hand side, there's a list of components that your object has. In this case, my object is really simple with just a mesh being present. Since the wall mesh is what is visible in the world, I'm going to go to the right hand side under details and I'm going to search for a setting called hidden in game. And we can see based off of the tooltip that this dictates whether we hide this object in game. So if I check this to true and then compile, you will see that inside of the preview, our wall is still here. This is the red wall here. But when I hit play, the wall is invisible. But if I try and run towards where the wall is, I'm not able to move through it. Hence, we are making that invisible wall. What's especially nice here is if I pull off a of begin play and pull out a delay node and pull a reference to our wall mesh, I can actually set hidden in game so that based off of a certain trigger, we can always re-enable this so that it is no longer hidden or hidden depending on what we want to set up future down the line. This allows you to set up scenarios where once a certain event is triggered, you can make this object visible. Let's say they have a certain item or something. So if for the purposes of this tutorial, I set the delay to three seconds and then I want my new hidden to be false so that it shows up in the game, I can compile and save this. And then when I hit play, the wall is invisible, but after a couple seconds of wait, it pops into existence. Now let's start with the second method, which is create a material that has opacity all the way driven up, which is going to change the material of our mesh. So to do that, we're going to right click inside of our content drawer and we're going to create a new material that I'm going to call my opass material. If we open this up, we get inside of our material editor and we're going to need to access this opacity thing right here, but you can see it's grayed out. In order to access opacity, we're going to go to the left hand side and we're going to go into the material section and change the blend mode away from opaque and into translucent. That changes all of the base properties that we're able to interact with. From there, I'm going to right click inside of this graph and then I'm going to look for something called a constant, which is basically just a number, and I'm going to attach the value zero to the opacity, and you'll see on the left hand side in our preview that it disappears once I connect that. So we can save this material because that's all set up, and now we're going to go into our blueprint for wall method two. I'm going to go to my wall mesh, and I'm going to change my material away from this green and towards that opacity material that we had just set up. So now when I compile and save this and go back into my preview window, you can see here that that wall has disappeared. More importantly, without this scene root, I would never be able to see where this wall is coming from. But just like before, if I run straight forward here, the wall is still active in the world and allows me to interact or not move through it. And just like before, we can set up events that allow us to change this material on the fly. So let's set up our delay node again and grab a reference to our mesh. And let's say we want to set the material after a certain delay has gone by. Well, we can do that pretty easily because we can set up a three second delay and then we can say we want to set the material to be anything else. And let's just change it to this pink since that's nice and readily available. And if we compile and save that, we can hit start and we can see we're in an invisible room, but after that three second delay, both of our things pop into existence with the proper material that we need to set. Now, if I'm being completely honest, I prefer method one. I like having the ability to see the full scope of my object in the preview window, which because of uh, issues that I have, allows me to keep track of things better. Plus, no matter what, we are able to adjust this based off of a Boolean. A Boolean is way easier to manipulate and keep track of than the material editor. Plus, if we ever did want to change this material away from red, we'd be able to do so, but that doesn't change the fact that we cannot really see what is going on with the second method. Like if I dragged this over inside of this circle, you'd see that then I just wouldn't have a clue where this is. So there are scenarios where we would just completely lose this object, which is why I, for the purposes of me going forward, am always going to default to method one because that Boolean toggle is way more flexible. So that's two quick methods on how to set up invisible materials inside of your games inside of Unreal Engine 5. If you got value out of this, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in a future video.